my name is Frédéric Bowman. I'm going to present you this tutorial to show you the Sony Vegas Event Pan Crop tool and five common usages of it. Let's first have an overview of the tool. For this purpose, I will add a picture to the project and click its Pan Crop button. That's it. I extend it a little and click the Tool button. I can now see the tool window. The most important thing here is certainly the dotted line rectangle around the picture with an F letter inside. It represents the output screen. Anything inside it will appear on the movie, anything outside will not. Let's review the different available buttons. The first one toggles the display of the property values. This one activates the main working mode. It should be on most of the time. It lets you modify the pan crop settings on the working area on the right hand side of the window. With it, you rotate the event, scale it and pan it, depending on where you click and drag in the working area. Notice that the mouse cursor changes in order to show you if you're going to pan, scale or rotate. This button activates the loop mode which lets you adjust the working area. Left click zooms in, right click zooms out. But notice that this does not have any effect to the event itself. It only changes the pan crop tool working area. Let's get back to the normal mode. Here I can pan the event and you can see the result in the preview. And if I click outside of the picture, I can pan the working area. This button toggles the grid mode. When it is on, panning and scaling follow the grid points as you can see here. When it is off, you can control what you do at the pixel level. This button toggles the log for aspect ratio. When it is on, you cannot change the ratio between height and width while you scale the clip. But when it is off, you can set the width and height independently from each other. This button defines how scaling works. When it is pressed, scaling keeps the event center at the same place. And when it is off, it is the opposite corner which keeps its location. This last button lets you lock or not the X and Y coordinates while you pan the event. By default, no locks apply. But now I can only pan along X. Even if I move the mouse vertically, nothing happens. You can also have the same behavior along Y and a third click on the button restores the normal mode. Let's now move on to the first typical use case of the tool, making a clip look better. So I will add a new clip to the project and open the pan crop tool. I can very easily resize the picture to make the bird bigger in the frame. I first scale the rectangle. Oh, too much. Okay, this way. And pan it. The grid does not let me place the frame at the exact place I want. I could toggle it off with the button on the left, but I can also deactivate it temporarily with the shift key. And that's it, we are all set for this first use case. Another common usage of the pan crop tool is to correct a tilted clip, typically when the camera was held by hand. As it is the case in this clip, the horizon is definitely not horizontal. To fix this, let's move the mouse out of the clip in a place where the cursor shows as a circular arrow. But before that, we can first activate the zoom mode and zoom out by right clicking. Get back to standard mode to recenter the workspace and now place the mouse anywhere between the circle and the clip. I can now rotate the clip by clicking and dragging. But the grid mode does not let me adjust the rotation accurately enough, so I am going to zoom the workspace and set the angle through the property sheet. I can use the slider, like this, or the keyboard and the adjustment arrows. I have a tip to finally control the horizon, which is to use the window border as I do here and check the parallelism of the border and the, or and the horizon. Here it is, now the horizon is horizontal. 
Now our next challenge is to get rid of the black corners resulting from the rotation. We can fix this by scaling the clip down and finely tune the size to keep the maximum area from the original clip. I do this here with the keyboard. We still have a bit of black here. So change again the width. And here we go. A third common usage is switching for portrait to landscape. I pick a picture which would normally be in portrait orientation, I display the pan crop panel and zoom the workspace out this way. I just have to rotate the picture up to 90 degrees as it is shown and written in the property sheet. And I may now adjust the scale after having checked that the aspect ratio is locked. This way. and adjust padding as I want. However, in this case, having the picture of Suntory is probably the best. If you want to fill the screen, you may zoom in the picture at the price of losing a part of it. Like this, and then you can choose the part you want to pick and make it visible. But I prefer to keep some black borders and have the tower completely in the picture. However, if your only purpose is to change the orientation of a picture, the simplest way is to right-click it on the timeline. To see this, I will add the same picture again, then right-click Properties in the menu, select the Media tab in the dialog box, and in the bottom, select the 90 degrees counterclockwise option in the rotation drop-down list and finally click OK. And that's it. Our fourth common usage of the tool will be managing the aspect ratio of a clip. Regularly, imported media do not have the same aspect ratio than your project. In my example, the project is 169 and I have to import a 4-3 picture. As a result, I have black lanes on the left and on the right. This is because my project is 169, as you may check here, 1280 by 720. To remove the black lanes, I open the pan crop tool and to make sure the change will apply since the beginning of the clip, I set the cursor to the beginning by clicking this button. You can see here the original width and height of the media. Because I want to change the aspect ratio, I'm going to switch the aspect ratio lock off. That's it. I can now enter width and height values corresponding to the project aspect ratio 1280 by 720, which is 69. The rectangle is now out of the workspace, so I'm going to zoom out. That's it. The rectangle now has the right aspect ratio. As I want to keep it, I switch the lock back to ON. And I can now adjust the size down, this way. Here I get back to the original layout with the black lanes. And I can shrink down again to fit the screen rectangle width with the picture width. This way I can have a screen fully filled with the picture. Afterward, I can adjust the panning vertically to choose the visible part of the picture. This way it looks fine. But there is a much shorter way to do this. I have shown the former one for learning purposes, but look at this one. In the pan crop dialog, right click the workspace. A menu option lets you reinitialize everything, so let's do this to restart. And now right click again and select match output aspect. We have the same result much faster, isn't it? We can now pan vertically like before, or for instance, right click once more and select center. That's it. To conclude this tutorial, here is my fifth common usage of the pan crop tool laying several tracks out on the screen. In this example, I have two clips. One is shot with a lens where image stabilization is on, and the other where it is off. And I want to show a side-by-side -side comparison. I have just dragged the non-stabilized clip to the timeline. Here it is. It is definitely not stabilized. And I now drag the stabilized clip to another track on top of the other one. This way. It 
let's watch this one. It is definitely stabilized. Much better, isn't it? So I'm going to make both clips the same length. So I cut the longest one with the S key and delete. And that's it. And I'm going to mute the top track to first pan crop the bottom one. I open the dialog box. First thing, set the cursor at the be beginning so that the effect applies to the whole clip, as usual. Then zoom the workspace out, this way. Panning a little. And uh, as I want this clip to appear on the left half of the screen, I enlarge the screen rectangle this way. You can check the result on the preview. And we are all set for this clip. OK. Now, I, as I want to work on the other track, I'm going to unmute it. Here it is. So the bottom one is not visible anymore for, for the moment. So again, let's zoom the workspace out this way, pan it a little, and enlarge the rectangle so that the clip fits only the right half of the screen. So I make the rectangle twice the size of the original clip. We now have the clips and tracks side by side, and let's see what it gives. This could be an ad for the lens vendor, isn't it? This tutorial is now finished. Thank you very much for watching it. Please feel free to send me any question or suggestion for another tutorial to my email address mentioned here. Thanks again and bye bye.